What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. As we know, there's a lot of Ryzen 7000 series powered handhelds coming to the market, at least a lot of them that have been announced. But it looks like the crown for the world's first Ryzen 7 7840U powered handheld is going to go to AOK Zoe with their brand new AOK Zoe A1 Pro. Now their Indiegogo campaign is going live soon and uh, I've actually got a prototype in my possession right now. I've had it for about a day, and I will have a full video coming up very soon, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. But first things first, let's go ahead and talk about the A1 Pro and what you'd get if you did back the Indiegogo. When it comes to these AOK Zoe handhelds, they love using the larger display, and this is something I personally really like. I just like having a larger display on my handheld. It might be a bit bigger than others on the market and a little bit heavier, but uh, you know, if you've got larger hands, then this would definitely be something for you. 8 inch IPS at 1920 by 1200. Full-size hall sensor-based joysticks. We do get linear triggers around back, but unfortunately these haven't been announced as hall-based, so I'm not exactly sure. I don't think they will be. I'm pretty sure they're using the base analog triggers here, but you know, I never had a problem with the original AOK -OK Zoe. They've also kept the RGB on the fronts here, and this is something I actually like. Um, you know, it's just a bit different not having it around the analog sticks like some of the other ones out there. You can always disable it if you want to, but there's tons of modes that you can mess around with. It also has a 65 watt hour battery with 100 watt quick charging capabilities. Now the first AOK -OK Zoe uh, had 100 watt charging, but it needed a BIOS update. Hopefully straight off the bat, this will have 100 watt out of the box. Single fan, aluminum fins, copper pipe heat sink to keep this APU nice and chilly. And it does support a 2280 NVMe M.2 SSD here, and it is PCIe 4.0, so you can get in here and upgrade it quite easily if you need to. And one thing they recently announced is they've actually done away with the 16 gigabyte model. They're going to keep the same price, but you get 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running at 6400 megahertz. In the past, they were going to offer a 16 and a 32, but they just went ahead and upgraded it and added a 64 gigabyte option also as their higher end model. And of course, when it comes to the main bread and butter here, this is utilizing the new AMD Ryzen 7840U. This is based on Zen 4. We've got 8 cores and 16 threads, up to 5.1 GHz. And of course, we've got RDNA 3 graphics. This is utilizing the Radeon 780M. Now, one thing I've been looking into are the clocks on the 780M. Of course, I've tested out a few different chips so far, like the 7940HS, and I don't see a reason that this can't be, you know, upped unless it's totally locked down by AMD. I've personally tested out the 7940HS, and that runs it up to 2800 megahertz. And I mean, it's an absolute beast. So with a little bit of help from the community, I'm pretty sure we'll see an overclock for this GPU. But right now on the 7840U, they're stating that 2200 megahertz is the clock on that 780M. They also posted the A1 Pro's Indiegogo launch time. And as of making this video, it may be up right now. I'm not sure when I'm going to get this uploaded, but uh, here's the chart right now that they have posted over on their website. And finally, the big question is price on this unit. What they've posted so far, I believe, are Indiegogo prices. And by the way, they will be offering two different color variants. We've got the blue with those yellow accents or the white version. The least expensive model that they're offering right now has 32 gigabytes of that DDR5 6400 MHz RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD coming in at $799. Taking it up to one terabyte, $859. 2 terabytes, 959, and their highest end model has 64 gigabytes of RAM and a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD coming in at $1,159. Now, of course, the elephant in the room is going to be the ROG Ally, and we're still waiting on the official price there, so uh, we're really going to have to see what uh, ASUS really does with the pricing on that thing. But they won't be offering something with 32 gigabytes of RAM or 64 gigabytes of RAM that we know of at the time of making this video. Couple more important facts, that uh, 8 inch IPS display is 100% sRGB, built in gyroscope, built in vibration motors, and it's got a micro SD card slot, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and the total weight on this unit is gonna be heavier than the other ones on the market right now, coming in at 720 grams, but we do have a 65 watt hour battery and an eight inch display. It's just a larger handheld. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do have my hands on a prototype of the A1 Pro, and I can tell you right now, it's definitely a powerful handheld. Full video will be coming, and for the games we're going to test in this one here, I do have VSync on. I want to show you what this thing can do in that full video because it can go pretty high here. Another thing to mention here is we've got the AOK -OK Zoe control panel, and from here we can change the TDP on the fly. Even if you're in a game, you can bring this up from 5 watts up to 28. And 28 is the max with this uh, control panel, 
but with a third-party app, we could go higher with it. We can also change the GPU clock speed, brightness on the screen, lots of great stuff here. And we've also got a control over the RGB here. So there's a few different presets right now, but I am on an older version of the AOK Zoe control panel. This will be updated with more profiles. And for the quick testing we're gonna take a look at in this video, I will be at 28 watts. All right, so first up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, low 1920 by 1200. And yeah, I mean, we're at 60 FPS here. Take a look at Afterburner, 28 watts, not maxing out the GPU or the CPU yet. Remember that GPU can go up to 2200 megahertz here, and we can lock that with a third-party app. It does come in handy for other games, like you'll see with the next one I'm gonna test. But running Cyberpunk 2077 at a constant 60 FPS on an APU is pretty impressive if you ask me. And I'll tell you, we're getting much more out of it but I've got V-Sync on right now because I'm gonna save all of that for the next video. And another big thing here with these RDNA3 iGPUs is RSR or the uh, Radeon Resolution Scale. We'll take a full look at that because it really helps out with a lot of games, but it is off for these two that I'm gonna show you. And the next one here is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Low settings, 1920 by 1200. Not bad at all, but we are dipping under 60. And if you take a look at Afterburner, I'm trying to get a feel for how this APU is going to work out, especially at 28 watts. When we say a TDP of 28 watts, it needs to split that up between the CPU and GPU. And right now I've got the GPU locked at 1900 megahertz. I think going down to around 18 might help out a little bit for those dips. But yeah, I mean, with a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of tuning, I'm pretty sure we could get this to run at a constant 60. So yeah, obviously coming in much more expensive than the Steam Deck. And of course, you know, we kind of expect that for these third-party handhelds hitting the market, especially with Ryzen 7000. But seeing that the lower end model's price is $799 is a bit promising. I mean, especially for the future of handhelds. Now again, elephant in the room is that ROG Ally. And we really got to see what the official price on that's going to be. But if you're interested in checking this out, I will leave a few links in the description. I'll leave a link to their official website and the Indiegogo. By the time this gets posted, it might be up. I might post it before. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work out, but either way, it's really close. And keep an eye out because I will be making a bunch of videos with this handheld. First up, we're going to test Windows 11. Obviously, we need to test a bunch of games there. We need to test some emulation. And I'd also like to install Steam OS 3 or Steam Deck OS on the AOK -OK Zoe A1 Pro. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.